This is the Grind It Podcast. We know just like grinding a handrail or across the coping can be challenging at times, so can life be. We share God's word and personal stories to encourage you to keep grinding and to not give up. It's time to grind. So here's the old school skateboarder himself, Randall Tucker. Yes. Shelby had something. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. She had something to contribute. Uh, I just found a verse in Titus chapter 3. Ooh. Um, and it says, At one time we too were foolish, disobedient, deceived, and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. We lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. But when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, he saved us not because of the righteous, righteous things we have done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs, having the hope of eternal life. Preach it, sister. Mm-hmm. Come on. That's good. That's that's good. Good. that is good. Grace. I heard it said it's God's redemption in Christ's expense. It, it doesn't matter. I can go out and baptize a million people tomorrow. That's not going to earn me a place in heaven. It, it doesn't matter. Why? You can play every instrument that's made known to man and have the greatest voice of an angel. I don't get you into heaven. It, 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 be on the stage every Sunday, do whatever. Come to youth group every Wednesday night, you know, whatever. It's all what Christ meant for us. Mm-hmm. This moment that we're talking about right here at the end of Mark, that his grace, his mercy, his compassion for us, him, it, it's, every, it's about everything that he did, willingly laying down his life so that we can have life. Mm-hmm. And so we all shall crucify him. They do. They do. Wait, do it with me. Crucify oh, him. <laughs> no, you, like, you scared the crap. Isn't it crazy oh, though? But, but that was me, right? Yeah. That was me not knowing, standing in the crowd, going crucify him. People right? do it every day. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't intentionally do that now, knowing what I know. But, but that's what was going on at the time. All the, the regular people, and some of the people, this, this is crazy, some of the ones that were celebrating his entry into Jerusalem the week before are now the ones shouting, crucify him! Can you imagine? Yeah. Like, a, a, a minute ago, they were like, Hosanna! Blessed is the king! Right? And now they're, down with the king, <laughs> crucify him! Yeah, they literally just a few days before, it, it, you know, I'm assuming some of the same, some of the same crowd had the palm branches and was, mm-hmm. holds in some of the day. Yeah. And now they're they've been persuaded to give up this murderer, and there's no way this guy could be. They've seen miracle after miracle after miracle for three to three and a half years. They've seen dead people come back to life, which is crazy. They've seen blind eyes healed, open. They they see they hear mute people speaking now. Mm-hmm. The deaf can hear. Withered hands. Withered hands out. thrown back. People who are paralytics getting up and walking. Demons being cast yeah. out. So how in the world could they, on one hand, cry out, "This is the one. This is the Messiah. We're putting our clothes down so the donkey can walk on our clothes." To crucify him, crucify him. Mm-hmm. What's the difference? Propaganda. Propaganda. <laughs> Persuasion. It, it is propaganda. Right. They were they were persuaded. The crowd was persuaded to uh, by these religious leaders. Mm-hmm. If, if I could just, yeah. I want to pull a trigger that I've been waiting to like pull a trigger on. But, um. So you were saying that about the religious leaders and how they were ignorant. Bliss, I, I ignorant of they, Jesus? They were ignorant of just, like how Mary said, one week, they're pra- not the religious leaders, but the people are saying, that's what I meant, my bad. The people, like, right? Um, the, sorry. <laughs> um, the people were ignorant of the fact that this is the very person that they were praising. 
And something that has been gnawing at me for the past few weeks has been, I've said it's just a habit a lot. Like, like it, there's a book, uh, Atomic Habits. <laughs> Um, I can't remember who it's by, but my mom's been reading it, and she's Good like, it. there's so many. Amazon. Them. Amazon it. Go get that book. Because <laughs> um, <laughs> apparently it's great. I haven't read it. But my mom said that a lot of times we just, we, we say that our sins or the things that we are just habit, and it's not breakable. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, I want to go to Philippians 3. I love the entire verse of Philippians 3, but I love this one little chunk that's in here. Um, it is, uh, for those who don't know, I have the Rainbow Bible, which is a CSB version of uh, the Bible, but everything is highlighted, color-coded, cross-referenced, everything. Um, graciously gifted to me by Mary. Um, and I want to start in verse 7, Philippians 3, verse 7. But everything that was a gain to me, I have considered to be a loss because of Christ. More than that, I also consider everything to be a loss in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. Because of him, I have suffered the loss of all things and consider them as dumb, so that I may gain Christ. Do you know what dumb is? I do. Okay. Do they know? Rubbish. Um, rubbish. <laughs> And be found in him, not having a righteousness by my, of my own from the law, but one that is through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. Watch this. My goal is to know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, uh, his sufferings, being conformed to his death, assuming that I will somehow reach the resurrection from among the dead. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I read this passage and I'm like, Huh. Con conforming to his death. Well, that means that I'm that I have to change my thought process. Romans twelve one through three. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. Yeah, by new that's true as well. And that and that's the thing. Like these people might have experienced Jesus close hand, but they're following what the crowd is doing. They're, they're, they're going along with everybody else, you know? So, like, so many times I'm in a young adult group as well, and it's like so many times we're told, well, be different. Stand out in the crowd. Well, it's because of stuff like this. The crowd says this. Even if there's people in the crowd that don't agree with the message, what are you going to do? Say something different? It's just like we were talking about, like, if somebody disagrees with you, what do you do? Do you ignore it? Or are you, are, are you, are you no, maybe not ignore it, that's not the right word. But are you passive? Or are you outward with your expression? Of and you got to think, too, that remember when, um, was it the man who was born blind, when he got healed, right? Or was it a paralytic? I can't remember. When Jesus, Some Jesus, dude. right, Jesus healed <laughs> Heal someone miraculously, yeah. and what do the the teachers of the law bring in his parents? John Nunn. Right? To yeah. say, hey, blind. was he really born blind? Oh, yeah. Has, yeah. has he really been healed? And at that point, they're saying, you better say the right thing or you're out of the synagogue. Yeah. yeah. So the synagogue was not just like, Hey, your local church, we've got 31 flavors here. If you get kicked out of this one, you can go to that one. You know what I'm saying? It was just, <laughs> right? But, but it was like you were being thrown out of your culture yeah. and from amongst your people. You're being excommunicated. It was your place of so, worship. So there was a whole lot of threat there going on that they were saying, hey, if you sign with this guy, hit the road, Jack. <laughs> You know, um, but yeah, there was a whole lot of pressure going on on there to to conform to what the crowd and what the leaders were saying. But and and Paul was the type of person that would kill these people, or would at least send send some people to persecute them. I know a guy. I know a guy. <laughs> I'll put you underneath your dirt house or whatever it is before he came. Before he came to Christ. And that's what I'm saying. 
a touch from the real a touch from the real Christ Come changes on. everything about yeah. who you are. It changes Absolutely. the DNA of who you are. Those people may have seen Jesus, but Jesus said, "Just because you've seen, that doesn't mean that you've uh, that doesn't mean that you've buried it. That doesn't mean that you're truly listening. You can hear with your ears and you can look with your eyes, but you don't. If you don't truly grasp what the message is saying." He's telling a bunch of stories and parables. Do they really understand the meaning of those parables? Right. What you does know? Isaiah say? Right. They'll be ever seeing but never perceiving, mm -hmm. ever ever hearing but never understanding. And I mean, there were even prophecies about that very thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That there would be people who would hear and see. Well, but think about the the, the parable of the farmer who's sowing seed. There's a lot of seed that didn't do anything. The birds came along, that, that, well, which is the enemy. The devil came along, snatched them up, took you know, picked up whatever had a chance to take root. But, but in the rest of that parable, in every one of those uh, examples, that it fell on some kind of soul, whether it be rocky soil, or good soil, or whatever kind of soil, but they all sprang up and, and, and just didn't get deep roots or whatever, and it, and it withered away. So that, the seed being the, the word of God in the kingdom, right? And this is and this is Paul saying everything else. It's everything dumb. else is nothing to me, it's true. because because I want to be conformed to his death, hoping that this is assuming, but it also says at the bottom here because I've been looking at that. Um, <laughs> it says <laughs> hoping that I will somehow reach the resurrection from among the dead, and that doesn't mean like he's dead and he's going to rise. That means from dead people who just who are concerned about. I mean, later on in this in this passage, he's saying that people that uh, let me see. I'm sorry. For I have often told you, and now say again with tears, that many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is their destruction. Their God is their stomach. Their glory is in their shame. They are focused on earthly things. Yeah, which is the, that, and see that that especially your how Oh. You're 12. You're, you're, you're the youngest at the table. You're, you're 22. How old are you? 17. 19. 19. See, see, especially you, it's dangerous to, to you just got to be careful who you follow, right? Um, because even church people can lead you astray. Oh my goodness, yeah. yeah. What? What? <laughs> what? It's a, a little church? What? <laughs> there, 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 sorry. It, it, y'all say it, it, you just have to be really, really careful because it, the the persuasion of a crowd is crazy. I mean, you look at rock concerts, you know. Oh like my that. gosh! Especially when you're in the pit of a of a of a crazy show like that, people do stuff at concerts and stuff that they would not do. If they were alive. Mm -hmm. You know, there might be some beverages or some. You know, some smoky things. Some herb. Yeah, some you know, herb being passed around. You know, hey, like, brother. They, and normally, you know, normally, they would never touch that stuff, but, you know, hey, my friends are here, and they're doing it, so why well, not? It might be safe. So it, 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 you got to be really careful. What did you say? Fear of missing out? Yeah. yeah. It's, like, it's a real thing, yeah. right? Yeah. And, it, and you know what's crazy about it, too, is I've been in the pits of some of those shows. Mm -hmm. It's FOMO from complete strangers. Oh, yeah. Again, again, it's that whole thing of like the voice of many equals, e crowd, equals the persuasion of one. Yeah. It kind of kicks in that adrenaline of like, oh, this could, this is like, a thing. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. like it kicks in that adrenaline of like, well, if I don't do this, like, I'm not cool to these people or I'm not, mm -hmm. okay, I'm missing out on like what other people, people, people think, you know? Yeah. And so, um, <laughs> mm, um, and it's it, literally random strangers. Like you're walking down the street and you change how you act because you care so much about what these people think and you never see them again. And you don't even know them. Like, yeah. Exactly. But it's that fear of missing out. It's that fear of wanting to be known in that sense. And it's like, this doesn't matter tomorrow or the next day. But it's that following the trend or following what other people want. Fear of man versus fear of God. Yeah, right? exactly. Fear of like, what, are, what is what is so-and-so going to think of me? How are they going to perceive me? How, you know, am I going to come off cool or am I going to be a stick in the mud? Exactly. You know, um, yeah. Or, exactly. or do I stand strong, like you said earlier, right? Stand out in the crowd, be a light in the darkness and do something different. Yeah, because there's also, um, in that same passage, it says here, 
Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm scrolling and I'm not trying to take up a ton of time on this, but this is a huge thing for me. Uh, okay, there it is. So do everything without grumbling and arguing so that you may be blameless and pure children of God who are faultless in a crooked and perverted generation among whom you shine like stars in the world by like holy and firm to the yeah, word of life. That's in the same chapter as what I just read before. So it's saying, stand out, verse, or sorry, chapter 2 is saying stand out. Chapter 3 is saying, how do we? Mm. What does it mean to truly stand out? Mm. You know, and all of that stems from, in, in my, from my perception of scripture, and obviously it's not gospel, even though we're in the gospel. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I'm weird. Um, so, we but from my perception of the, go of, of the gospel, Jesus is straight up saying, no, I'm, I'm, I'm different because you could, it, it's very easy for me to just take all of this away. All of, the, all of this could just, all of this could be done. You know, I, I could walk free right now. I could be the one that breaks these chains and walks free, but I'm not going to. All right, I got a question though to answer, anybody answer, but I, I want to say something before, and I'll give you a chance to think about it for a second. So how do we stand out? How do we stand out from amongst the crowd? How do we not be persuaded to follow the crowd? Because I understand. When I was skateboarding and stuff, and, you know, pretty decent at it. But when I was by myself, eh, I was bored to death. But as soon as the crowd showed up, it's time to, it's time to show up. It, it just pumped, you know, got me going, and, you know, so I, I understand the persuasion of the crowd, um, but how 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 do we stand out? Um, we if, have you seen the chosen? Have y'all seen the yeah. chosen? I've seen parts of it. Yeah. I haven't. All right. So if you have ever seen the intro of the chosen, I love this. Mm -hmm. So all the fish are swimming in one direction, yeah. right? They're <laughs> just be bobbing yeah, across yeah. the screen, and the next thing you know, here comes a little uh, light blue teal fish swimming in the opposite direction, going against the crowd. Yeah. And I, you know, I think I pointed out to you when we went to the, to the theater to watch it. I said, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> that fish stands out from among the crowd. Why? Because it's, it's swimming in an in a opposite direction. Mm -hmm. Which is, it's, if you think about it, that's what we're called to do. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're called to be a light on a hill. You know, not, not to hide our light. We're, we're called to be the salt of the earth. You know, um, so... How do we how do we not follow the crowd, and how do we stand out? What do you think? I got a long answer. I'm going to give you because you you you, you didn't. I know gave this. a long answer too. No, so. You actually didn't know this, but that's where we were headed. Oh, sick! Let's yeah. go. See, look at yeah. your totally gifting. <laughs> <up. laughs> <laughs> I just I thought that was cool. <laughs> that is cool. That is that is insane. I mean, that's. So, how do you stand out amongst your peers? Let's let's bring this down to, okay, Jess, you um you homeschool, right? So you're not typically in a school situation like a lot of other people are, but for your age group, where are you amongst um, a group? Besides church. Well, you, you've got a few friends that you hang out with fairly regularly, and that could be one or two at a time, or even at church, right? Even yeah. at church amongst the youth group. You know, we, we talked in one of these podcasts about the fact that the devil goes to church, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, but, not our church, just saying. Um, but 322. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 322. 322. 322. <laughs> Alcohol. So, I mean, even, even amongst your morning. peers at church, you know, church. <laughs> not saying that this would happen, but that could be a place where there's some negative peer pressure going on in a crowd. How do you stand up against that? Mm -hmm. I feel like I would, that's hard. I feel like I would just, like, see it's not behind me, and, like, it's not what God wants you to do. It's not the plan for your life like, to Come be on. like that. Yeah, so, and that's good, and it takes boldness and courage, even just to stay back. 
amongst people that you're your friends or hanging out with, amongst people your own age. That's awesome. And and that would be a hard thing to do, but good for you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my pa if I can, uh, my pastor always says that we're all made to be followers of Christ. But the people of influence have the largest target. People that have influence. And we should all be people of influence. Yeah. Influencer, influencer today means I'm in front of a camera. I have a mic set up. I have this. I do yeah, these things. Dance. I can. <laughs> I can't dance. Uh, but, but I can. But even even in the Christian world, like okay, I, I am gonna plug. I am gonna put plug QuickBook. The reset. Jeremy Riddle. Go read that because he's talking about canceling the culture of influencer worship. It, it, it's 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 huge. Yeah, it's huge awesome. right now. It's a general. It's an industry that nobody talks about. Where worship is an industry that not many people are. Uh, many people are just like, oh, they sing songs with buddy. No, it's it's music business. There's there's lucrative deals that happen. There's contracts. There's millions of dollars. But, I mean, there's so many different things about worship music that people just don't understand. Yeah, yeah. And it's these people. It's these people. It's the people of influence. How are you? How are you being perceived? First of all, whenever you're in a position of influence like that, and what are you doing to be different? Okay. Now you are part of the worship team at your church, right? Or yes. amongst your yes um, young adults, mm -hmm. right? So as a person who is on a platform, mm -hmm. as a person of influence within the church body. How do you stand out? Your standard of living, not just your standard of your spiritual life, but your standard of living has to increase. And what I mean by that is like... We're not talking about dollar signs, right? No. no. I, I am peace and love. I'm broke. I got a green F-150 out there from 97. <laughs> I'm broke, but you know what? Spiritually, I could not be happier, more content, more... and. And the thing that, the biggest thing that I think has been the deal, the, the deal for me right now, is humility. Come on. Humil two things. I'll, I'll give you two things. Humility and patience. Humility to say, just a little patient. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> 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 break it <laughs> Secular no, songs, please don't cancel us. Like, yeah. so, come back, Holy Spirit, come back. <laughs> so, 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 the, so, the, so the two biggest, humility. the two biggest is patience and humility. Patience when you're talking about others. How, man, oh man, the the worship team that I work with is wonderful. And nine times out of ten, we work really well together. But every so often, there's the one out of ten. Well, because every and a hundred percent. So how? So how do you show patience? Something that I've learned is it's a lot about. You on screen no, your body language has to be relaxed. I knew the one, the it's one out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> You're being a real one out of ten right now. <laughs> Shut. Give that to one of your kids. Judas! Right? Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but, but legitimately saying, like, being more relaxed in your body posture is even something that I've, I've learned relaxes people and allows them to open what up you mean? to don't, don't do that. Not this. this. Man, <laughs> no. sit down with them. Don't stand up and, like, try to tower over them or show your dominance or get up right in their face. I mean, even, that's obvious. But even like subtle things like just standing up rather than sitting down can be a psychological thing of like, oh, yeah. crap, like this person, like this mm -hmm. person means business. They're trying to like, no, sit down with them and say, hey, listen, I I'm sorry, we're not agreeing. Um, let's try to find some kind of resolution. Awesome. And, and approach it from let's fix, let let's try to solve the problem together rather than we're doing it my way. No compromise, no you know, nothing. Yeah. So that's that's one.
Prompt, uh, patience is number one. And number two is humility. And I think that the arch enemy of humility is comparison. Mm -hmm. I, un, unchecked and in an unhealthy way, comparison is the, is the killer of creativity. Come on. Because you are constantly comparison. trying to compare yourself to this person. I'll give a great example. Nico Barbosa is a phenomenal guitar player. If y'all don't know him in this circle, please go look him up. He's phenomenal. He's the guitar player for Louis Fonzie, the Despacito. Don't, don't look at that song. But that, <laughs> he, he played the guitar on that track, and he's also played for a bunch of different people. And he was and he went to Lee, got an associate or uh, sorry, a uh, degree in music business, and is one of the most phenomenally talented guitar players I think of. And he's Christian. He's born again Christian. He loves touring with you know you know he gets to do all these crazy amazing things. It's not completely kingdom. However, he does have kingdom influence over people in the secular genre, which is wonderful. We need more people like that. And don't be all the time, like Instagram, social media, especially for people in my generation, Gen Z, and what's coming up, Gen Alpha. We are so, 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 so hyper-obsessed with people that, that are living the kind of lives that we have. Or like the kind of life that we want. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was really weird. It was just him. Like, I would look at his Instagram posts all the time and just be like, what is he doing? You know what I mean? How is he doing this? How, like, what kind of mic setup has he got going on? What, is he, what kind of habits is he rocking? Because that's all I cared about. I cared about being the most professional, polished-looking guitar player on Instagram, YouTube, whatever. Right. When you stop chasing perfection and when you stop trying to be somebody else, come on, it is way easier on you, but it also is the example of humility that Christ showed. Christ knew he was the Son of God, yet he humbled himself. Mm -hmm. When before I, I didn't I didn't know I'm sorry, I, I know I'm talking a lot. No, I right. apologize. <laughs> Monday Thursday is something that I've never heard of, but it is one of the most important Christian practices. And there's times in my church where we practice foot washing ceremonies. Okay. And it's the most spiritually impactful thing ever. Why? Because they get low. Mm -hmm. it, our leaders, the people that I look up to, sit me in a chair, take off my shoes, start washing my feet. Mm -hmm. Jesus did the exact same thing to all 12 of his disciples. John 13, including Judas. John 13. Including Judas. John 13. All of his disciples. He washed their feet. Why? Because he was the humble servant. Right. He, he came in humility. Yeah. He came to serve. So those are two of the biggest, like as somebody who has semi-medium influence in, in my church, two biggest things, patience and humility. Do me a favor, go and check out some awesome worship music that's written and sung by my beautiful wife, Mary Tucker, and you can check that out at marygamboamusic.com. Mary is the worship leader at Authentic Church at 322 Lindsay Street in Alcoa, Tennessee. Now you can check us out and come worship with us on Sundays at 10 a.m., and we'd love to have you there. Also, you can download Mary's songs wherever you stream your music. If you would like to book Mary for your next event, contact her through the website at marygamboamusic.com or you can text her at area code 865-418-2824. We look forward to worshiping with you soon. Now, back to the podcast. Please, somebody add to that. I'm begging you, somebody you add to that. Out? I cannot be the how, last word on this. How, how do we stand out from among the crowd? How do we be that one fish that goes against the, the ground? You brought up like standing up, and I think standing up and standing out are very different in ways, but they also correlate together. So like, you can't stand up and or without standing out, and so it's one of those things of like standing out in our society now is um, not caring for the approval um, and not needing to be enough for the people around us. But I think standing up is what really proves how much you stand out. And so, like, what you're standing up for proves your ability to stand out to the people, obviously. Sure. But, like, it proves how much you stand out and, like, what 
you really are for and like what you're against. But so in standing up and standing out, like when I was younger, I was always taught, "Oh, you gotta stand out. Like you gotta be different." And I'm like, "But how?" And nobody ever tells you how to stand out. That's very they true. Just tell <laughs> you, like, they just tell you. They just tell you to be a world changer, but exactly. they don't tell you how to change the world. Exactly, but it's also something that they can't really tell you how to do. But it's something that needs guidance as well. If you tell kids like stand out, they're like, "What am I supposed to do?" You're like, "Well, stand out." Like, you're not teaching them how to stand out and how to be different. You're just telling them to do it. And I feel like that's one of the things that's so hard in our society. Of we're being told to stand out, but we don't know how because we've always been taught to stand in the crowd. We've never been taught like, "Hey, like, there's a world outside of this border, like outside of this." Out in this like little square, like you can walk around it, like you can. But it's that also fear of well, I don't know what's on the other side. I don't know what's outside of this, and so if I stand out, what's gonna happen to me? And so you just said a, a key word that Satan uses against God's people to keep them in the crowd, and that word's fear. Mm-hmm. And. God's word says he didn't give us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and sound mind, right? Sorry. No, you're good. Yeah. You're good. It's, it's one of those things that, like, I look at kids nowadays, and um, y'all were talking about feet washing, and I don't know the whole significance of it, and I wish I did, and it's something that I need to look at more. It is a very, but very interesting topic. It's, it's, it's also so powerful, though. Like, I, that's one of the things that I know is such a powerful um, service, but... It's, it means so much more than just that. And I, um, I go to a Christian school, and my a Bible teacher with the freshman last year, who I saw more now this year, um, he did a feet washing for their class. And I remember these girls coming out, and they were laughing. They were like, this was so dumb. Like, why did he do that? That's so, like, um, they are like, it's so weird. And as I'm passing them, I'm like, they don't understand what it means to be different. Because if you look at these girls, and there's nothing against them, they're really sweet girls, but they all look the same. They all have the same style, they all are wearing the same clothes, they all look the same. And it really, like, broke that perspective of, like, wait. And I'm very much an observant person, so I watch people. I love watching people, and it sounds so bad. No, no, you want to have a good time? Go to the Smoky Mountains and just yes. yeah. just yes. do that. But I, oh, I, I, I literally, so awesome. I literally just yesterday told her like we're driving we're driving home from South Carolina, and so we're passing all these people in these cars. And I, I told her at some point that I was like, do you ever just see these people in these cars and wonder, you know, what their life like? What, oh my gosh, yeah. how do they say yeah. they know Jesus? How do they reach all you pass these somebody in the grocery store in your life? Oh. That guy looks like an interesting yeah, like yeah, especially yeah, Walmart. Yeah, he looks yes, like an interesting literally. cat, man. He's yeah. just like, oh, I want to know about that dude's like, and yeah. he's just like, he's got tie dye and he oh, smells yeah. like incense. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. He's like, just crazy. Cool. I, I'm like, oh, I gotta know this guy's story, but I'm scared to ask. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Okay, so back to you. Anyway, <laughs> back to you. Back to the come back, Holy Spirit. I'm yeah. begging you. But, like, I come from California, and you go to California, and you see these girls, and they're all in, like, you know, the short tops, like, the short shorts, you know, like, all the new clothes, you know, they're all, like, dyed their hair blonde, you know, yeah. like, they're, which, there's nothing against that. I went through that phase, but, like, you know, it's just, I did like, <laughs> it's one of those things that, like, you start to look around, and you're like, whoa, everybody is the same in different ways, and it really shows you of, like, how much people do not choose to stand out and don't know how to. And it's, as I've grown up in a house that's like, hey, like, you can be different. Like, that's okay. Like, not everybody's the same, you know? And I'm like, growing up, I always wanted to fit in. I wanted to be in the crowd. I wanted to be that person. And until I realized that you'll never truly be in the crowd because the crowd's always going somewhere else. (laughs) But by the time you hit the crowd, the crowd's gone. Like, right. You know, like, the trend, they're gone. Like, you you never truly will stand out. It's for, just stand in. Sorry. You realize how important it is to stand out. 
And it's one of those things of like, it's not fun to stand in the crowd. Mm -hmm. It's really not. Everybody makes it out to be so fun. It's so fun to go out clubbing, you know, out drinking. Like, no, it's not. Like, it's it's really not. Like, oh, like, just try this. Like, no. Like, it's one of those things of the crowd looks so good. But it's one of those things that, like, my parents always, when I was growing up, they are like, Satan gives you that apple and it looks so great. But it's not like yeah. But yeah. by the time yeah. you eat it, you don't know. Like yeah. Yeah. you know. It's and so true. like I'm yeah. Going off what you said. Yeah. My mom bought me like a little sign when I went to eighth grade and it was like, Why fit in when you were born to stand mm-hmm. out? Come on. Yeah. So that's like what I've always looked at and it's like you wanna keep your friends but you don't wanna do what they're doing. Like, so it's like if I stand out, I'll lose certain friends that I want to keep but it's also like i don't want to do what they're doing you know mm-hmm. like especially if they're making bad choices yeah. <laughs> which is where the peer pressure comes in but you also have to ask yourself is god more important than my friends yeah and like sure. do you want to stand out do you want to be that run. light yeah, a, that shines instead of it's, being cool especially for how young you are she shoots, she yeah. scores. <laughs> no, but, but but seriously, for being as young as you are, that is one of the hardest things that uh, people in your that. generation can do yeah. right now. That, that, that is true. We all, we all <laughs> we all wanna we all wanna at least somewhat I mean, I remember high school. High school was rough. Yeah. High school was rough oh, yeah. for, for your boy. High school was rough. <laughs> um I, I loved some aspects of it. There were some aspects of the community that I really loved. What? <laughs> you keep shaking your head like... And he said, no, nothing, nothing about high school is good. <laughs> I, I mean, well... Well, there were some good things that came out of it. I mean, I, I learned how to be a musician. You came out of it. I, well, right. yes. Hey, you survived. But also... Also, um, it was her who really in, it like inspired me to pick up guitar. And really inspired me to become the musician I am right now. That's a fact on people. And um, the the deal is is that man, when I was in high school, oh man, I was I was I was very like closed off. Like I had my close. Well, honestly, yeah. I mean, it was really weird. I had a very close circle of friends, but I always wanted them to like perceive me as this person. But it was never. Dylan the Christ follower when I was in high school. It was never that. It was Dylan the cool guy or Dylan the Dylan the class clown or Dylan this or Dylan that. It was never Dylan child of God. It was never that for me. It was always about the perception of what I wanted people to think of me as. So, and, and hear me when I say that. When you're that age and you have that understanding of well, it's not about what people think about me. It's not. It's not about that. It's what God thinks about me. Mm-hmm. And, and if you truly walk that out, you are going to stand out. It's going to be natural. You have to mm-hmm. also ask yourself, like, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> no, I bring it back. We do the same. Thing. So going back to something you said a while ago, you said you're talking about being different, right? Yeah. So, well, I was preaching at this church in Burnsville, North Carolina. And we had, there was, uh, they built a skate park just about a block from the church building. So we started feeding the skaters on Wednesday nights and it just kept growing and growing and growing. So we started feeding them uh, every, every week. And then we built some skateboard ramps in the parking lot and it just, just continued to grow. And then our family started coming to church and things like that. So we decided we were going to rent a 3,500 square foot building and we did an indoor skate park. It was a team oh, center. Yes, it, was, so it, had, it had pool tables, air hockey tables, computers. This is about, this is how long ago it's been. It was PS2s. Nice. Yeah, it's been a while. Woo, woo. But Vintage. My, yeah. Okay, so the name of the, the team center was called The Shack. And it stands for Serving Him as Conquering King. The where Shack. where was this? Burnsville, North Carolina. That's really cool. I... I I'm not even joking. I think I know where that is. I I, I remember that. Really? That's crazy. Well, that's uh, insane. Because so I come from Gastonia. Oh, you did? I yeah. preached in Gastonia. No freaking way. I did. So, <laughs> back to ten. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's insane. All right. All right so so the theme, because because 
I had a, there was a lot of drug use, a lot of alcohol. There, there was, most of my, the kids that came there didn't have, either they had a mom or they had a dad. And if they did have a mom and a dad, they were alcoholics or drug users or something like that. So it, 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 it's a different background of kids that I'm used to dealing with. And uh, this is one of my boards from when I skated. And of course, you can see it's broken. Um, but this is the one of, it was called U-Turn Ministry. You know how God can let us all make new turns, right? Uh -huh. But look, look, this was the thing that we had. It was all over the teen center. It's okay to be different because Jesus was different. He stood out, right? And, and so I, I want to rein this in and, and talk about what Paul said. Because we're talking, going back to what we were saying, Jesus died for us. He took our place, right? He definitely stood out. Even amongst the religious people, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the, the religious teachers, he stood out, right? And we're called to stand out. Right? That's, what, that's what we've been talking about. And Barabbas was given grace and given mercy. Jesus, the, the real son of the Father, took his place, just like he took ours. And so when we come to Christ and that old man is buried and gone, the old man, old woman, however you, you know, if you're a man or female, whatever, and, and we start walking with Christ, we're, we're a new creation in Christ, right? We're filled with God's Holy Spirit and we begin to walk with him. And that's how, that's that fish on the chosen, you know, you got the crowd of fish and then the one fish swimming against the grain. And so, Everything that y'all said is literally what Paul says in Galatians 5, 13 through 26. And that's what I want to kind of wrap this thing up with. And if y'all have anything else you want to say about it, when I get done reading this. Galatians, what was it? No, Galatians 5, beginning in verse 13. And anything you want to say while I'm reading it, jump on in. For you have been called to live in freedom. Yeah, that's my good. My brothers and sisters. That's so good. he's talking to Christians. You've, you, you, you've been called to live in freedom. People who follow the crowd are in bondage. Mm -hmm. They're in bondage. They don't even realize it. That's, that's the sad thing. But you've been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters. But don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. For the whole law can be summed up in this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. Didn't Jesus say that? What's the greatest commandment? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. And Jesus went up to God. He said, and the second one is just like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. Well, here's Paul saying, love your neighbor as yourself. But if you're always biting and devouring one another, biting at and devouring one another, watch out. Beware of destroying one another. So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. There's how you can stand out. Right there. Mm -hmm. Let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. What you were kind of what you were just saying a while ago. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are, are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting against each other, so you are not free to carry out your own good, your good intentions. But when you are directed by the Spirit, that's key, when you are directed by the Spirit, you are not under obligation to the law of Moses. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition or selfishness, right? Dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties. And if he didn't cover it by naming it, he says, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. So if you want to be different, if you want to stand out, don't do that stuff. Mm -hmm. Let your life be led by the Spirit. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in your lives. If you want to stand out, do this. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against these things, there's no, there's no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. Why? Because the old man's passed away. Right? Mm, that's good. Since we are living by the Spirit, because we're now, since we give our lives to Christ, we're full of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, he's, 
leading us, right? He's directing our lives, or should be. Since we're living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part, every part of our lives. It's not hard, that's not easy to do when we're around the crowd, right? Well, you know, I want to keep one foot over here in the world and one foot over here in the church. I want to keep one foot over here with my crowd of friends that's not living for Jesus, but, you know, I want to keep one foot with Jesus. And it don't work. It don't work that way. It don't work that way. But uh, those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and that's desires so of their sinful nature to his cross that's crazy. and crucified them there. Since we're living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Not just part of it, but every part. Let us not become conceited or provoke one another or be jealous of one another. That's Galatians uh, 5, 13 through 26. Then in Romans 8, 5 through 17, he says, Those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things. But those who are controlled by the Spirit... The Holy Spirit, think about things that please the Spirit. You want to stand out? You got to let the Holy Spirit be your leader, be your guide, and you're following the Holy Spirit. Well, how do you know the Holy Spirit is God in your life? Because you're thinking about things that please the Spirit, mm -hmm. please God. So when you're with the crowd and they're starting to do something, you say, Does this please God or does it not? If it doesn't please God, get out. Leave. Leave the crowd. Go stand out. Then tell them what you're doing. So letting your sinful nature control your minds lead to death. But letting the Spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. For the sinful nature is always hostile to God. Mm -hmm. It never did obey God's laws, and it never will. That's why those who are still under the control of their sinful nature can never please God. But you are not controlled by your spirit, controlled by your sinful nature. Who is he talking to? People who have made Christ their Lord and Savior. Who are washed in the blood of Jesus and filled with the Spirit. You're not controlled by your sinful nature. You are controlled by the Spirit if you have the Spirit of God living in you. We talked about this before we started recording when we was eating dinner a while ago, right? But when are we filled with the Spirit? When we give our lives to Jesus, we're filled with the Spirit. Acts chapter 2, verse 36, 37 through 42. Right? Uh, you're not controlled by your sinful nature. You're controlled by the Spirit if you have the Spirit of God living in you. And remember that those who do not have the Spirit of Christ living in them do not belong to Him at all. And Christ lives within you. So even though your body will die because of sin, the Spirit gives you life because you have been made right with God. The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. Come on. The same one? The same one. Mm. Has not changed. I'm the same today, yesterday, and forever. The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. You, 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 and you. And everybody who listens to this podcast is giving their life to Christ. The same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in us. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, He will give life to your mortal bodies by the same Spirit living within you. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, again, right to Christians, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. You don't have to give in to that sin. You're going to be tempted, right? James tells us we're tempted by our own lusts our own desires, our own passions, things that we'd like to do. But we don't have to give in. But we don't have to give in. God always makes a way of escape. Every time. And it's a two-letter word. No. Or go. Yeah, or go. <laughs> or go. I ain't done it. No, or Please. get out. Yeah. I Please. ain't done it. Well, and if I can... Yeah, yeah, yeah jump in. Real quick. We'll come back to you. Um... What passage of scripture is that again? I'm sorry. This one is Romans 8, 5 through 17. Oh, you were in there. You said Romans 5. Wrong. Well, I'll say this. I am glad, I'm glad that. I transposed my numbers. She said that. <laughs> That's funny. Um, I'm glad you said 5 because this is a passage that I've been looking for for a while. You were saying uh, in that passage, it was talking about. Um, we are the way we are because of who Jesus is. And that was what we started the podcast saying. Right. Well, this ties it together. Romans 5, 6, For while we were still helpless at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For rarely will someone die for a just person. Though for a good person, perhaps, someone might even dare to die. 
But God proves his own love for this, and what in that, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. How much more then, since we have now been declared righteous by his blood, will we be saved through him from wrath? For if, while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his Son, then how much more, having been reconciled, will we be saved by his life? Do y'all know what that word reconciled means? It means being made friends again. Mm-hmm. Through Christ's death and the blood that he shed, we have been made friends again with God. Right. And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received this reconciliation. So, that is literally what we started talking about with we are changed from Barabbas, Judas. Um, I almost said Nicodemus, but that's not right. Uh, uh, Pontius. Pontius Pilate, uh, from what's the guy's name? Uh, Caiaphas, mm-hmm. the man who the man who ultimately tried Jesus. Right. We were those people, and in fact, what you were saying uh, at the beginning is we still are those people from time to time. We still are the same people that um, let the that, that yeah, a hundred percent. Let let the let the spirit die and let the flesh take over. Red Rover, Red Rover said the not so Christian Dylan of Red Rover. You know what I mean? So, it, I mean, that's just that. That's what happens sometimes. You know. That's all right. I was thinking of doing the hokey pokey and turning around. Turn around. <laughs> when she was talking about standing out and being different. Turn. Like, I had the hokey pokey going through my mind. So, it, it is a hell <laughs> Lord. Um, it ties everything together. It says we were. We are now declared righteous. We have a new identity. Come on. And what do you do when you have a new... Like, if you if you buy a new... This is so I've weird. got a new life. <laughs> my, my, <laughs> my old pastor had a leather jacket. Oh. And he used to... Man, he used to wear the crap out of that leather jacket. He used to wear it, wear it, wear it. And every time that he got that leather jacket, he was like, I got it for a deal, I got it all... And he'd show it off a little bit, but it wasn't to like anybody in the ministry. It was just to a couple of his friends, you know. But I always, I always made fun of him for it. But now I get it. When you have a garment, when you have something new on you, why wouldn't you show it off? If if you have a reconciliation with the Father who made you, come on, you after you were identity. after you were enemies, Good. it says we were still sinners yet. He died for us. You were enemies of God, and and all and man, you can read the new the Old Testament, and a lot of people have said, well, the Old Testament's nothing but murder and God's wrath and da 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 da. Yeah, because that's what His enemies were. They were God's enemies. Mm-hmm. We were that, but because of Jesus' sacrifice, we are now. It, it's I, I can't remember where it's at. You'll have to quote it for me. I'm a friend of God. Friend of God? I don't know. Abraham was called the friend, friend of God. God. Oh, okay, never mind. I, it was <laughs> I, don't, I don't know where it's at, though. I'm Stunning a friend out. of God. I thought it was in that was the New Testament. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, thought it was, I thought it was in the New Testament as well that we're, that we're called. Oh, co-heirs with Christ. Where's that at? Oh, goodness. Peter. Well, and Jesus even says when he's okay. washing the disciples' feet, he says, I no longer call you servants. Yeah, right? that's yeah. But you are friends. Yeah, there it is, right there. That's John fifteen. And, uh, right, uh, a servant doesn't know his master's business, but I call you friends. Now, yeah. So, we're friends of God. We're friends of Jesus. Co-heirs with Christ. Come on. So why wouldn't you show that off? Come on, yeah. stand out. Romans eight seventeen. We're co-heirs with Christ. Yeah. What? And there you go. There it is in eight. Romans 8, 16, 17. Bring it in for landing, love. All right. Come on. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. For if you live by its dictates, you will die. But if through the power of the Spirit you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, you'll live. For all who are led, and this is the key right here. Mm -hmm. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. That's how you stand out. That's all who's leading you. If the crowd's leading you and they're leading you into sin, you're fulfilling the fleshful desires, not good. You gotta be led by the Spirit of God. Mm-hmm. Listen to his voice. 
and, and being obedient to it. So you've not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves because it gives you freedom. Instead, you received God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. Now we call him Abba, Abba, Father, Daddy. For his spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. And since we are his children, we are his heirs. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. But if we are to share his glory, we must also share his suffering. So we'll end it with this. A question that we all have to ask is the same question that Pilate asked the crowd. Pilate asked them, then what should I do with this man you call the king of the Jews? Mm. What are you going to do with Jesus? Ooh, yes, Come good. on. Question. What are you going to do with Jesus? Be led by him. Mm -hmm. Lord, well, why don't you pray and we'll end the okay. podcast with a prayer. All right. Does anybody have, do you have anything? Mm -hmm. Chad, no, this anything? was fun. I enjoyed this. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Father that you have called us co-heirs with Christ because of that blood that has washed us. And I pray that if anybody's listening, anybody's watching today that, that hasn't taken that step to, um, to declare that you are Lord and Savior over their lives, that today is the day of salvation. That right now is that moment of decision. And they say, yes, I want to stand out. I want to be led by the Spirit of God. And I want God to come and reside on the inside of me. Let that be today. So, Lord, we just ask you, going forth from this place, um, as we've studied, as we've chewed on your word, as we meditated on your goodness, and the fact that you have given us a different identity, you have given us... Um, authority and and you've changed us not to fit in with the crowd but to stand out to stand out for righteousness lord that we do that very thing whether we're in the grocery store or whether we're amongst our peers whether we're, we're at school whether we're in a church context wherever we are that we would shine like stars in the darkness mm -hmm. and that in every part of it we point to you so lord thank you you didn't make us to fit in. You called us to stand out. So give us the strength, the courage, and the boldness to do that for you in this in this culture. We ask for it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. I thought you was going to be see top there for a minute. I want to shine like the stars in the heavens. Oh, oh my gosh, I forgot about that song. <laughs> be in the light as you are in the light. Yeah, that's what Keep grinding. Woo! Thanks for listening to the Grinded Podcast. If we could pray for you or encourage you in any way, please email us at thegrinditpodcast at gmail.com or you can text us at 865 418 2824. If you're watching on YouTube, please click like and subscribe and you'll be notified about new episodes. If you're listening on an app, leave us a five star review, but most importantly, share the Grinded Podcast with a friend. God bless you and remember, Keep grinding.